happy Monday, you all. Welcome to Pros of Eden. Thank you for joining me. I want to talk to you this motivational Monday about building altars. A lot of people don't understand the power of building altars everywhere we go. And often, unfortunately, people associate altars with the demonic when they're all throughout the Bible. Remember, Satan always comes. He's a copycat. And he always takes what God's original is and he makes a counterfeit. But I want to talk to you about the altars that you're building in your life because life is spiritual and you're either building altars that open doors to the enemy or you're either building an altar unto God that opens up the floodgates of heaven. Hallelujah. And I don't know about you, but I want to make sure that I have open floodgates of heaven over my life. We see all throughout the Bible over 300 times where God talks about altars. And if he talks about it that much, guess what, y'all? <laughs> it's pretty important. It even starts off in the book of Genesis where we see Jacob. He builds an altar. We see Abraham. We see Noah. One of the first things he does, imagine coming off of a flood right what does he do he builds an altar unto God a spiritual altar and we all build some type of altar in our lives some people build altars to the dead and we know how the father feels about that you know we don't we, we can honor those around us but we don't you know build shrines and we don't uh what do I call it? build an altar like candles building altars to the dead no the only altars we want to build are for the most high God so when you talk about altars some people need to pull down spiritual altars of the enemy and they need to build altars unto God and one way you can do that the best way to do that is through prayer and setting the atmosphere every room in your house can be an altar some people have dedicated spaces like one of my dedicated spaces is like my office, you all, um, where I come and I pray and I meet with God. But to be quite honest, I have altars my whole house, my living room, my bedroom, everywhere I meditate, everywhere I talk to God, everywhere I'm praying and I spend time really honoring God and seeking his face. When you do that, you're building a spiritual altar, whatever you spend most of your time doing. That is going to, you know, build an altar. Some people, their mind is always stuck on the dead. And guess what? Well, you're building an altar spiritually to the dead. Some people, you know, they build altars around working out. Whatever the passions of your heart, there's nothing wrong with that. But when we think about all the rooms we have in our house and what they're dedicated for, do you have a room? Do you have a space in your home that is dedicated to God? Have you built an altar for God, right? And so I just wanted to put that in your mind and get you going, get you thinking. I like to get you thinking about things that maybe would have never, ever crossed your mind. You know, even your car. I always tell my kids when they borrow my car, I'm like, that car is anointed. It is full of worship and praise music and the light of God. So when you go in there, don't be going in there distracting my atmosphere with your little music. <laughs> And so we laugh about that. But it's true, even your vehicle is, is an altar. You drive in it every day. What are you listening to? What do you do? What are you thinking about? Are you meditating, praying? Are you declaring the word of God? As you do that, you create an atmosphere, you all. We are atmosphere creators, either for the good or for the bad, right? So I want to challenge you today, even in your workplace, even in your office, you know, what are, what kind of atmosphere you are creating? And I'm going to tell you something that, um, you know, not, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want you to think I'm boasting. I'm boasting in the power of the Lord. But where I have worked, the rooms that I have been in, I will tell you, people will come in and they will say, it is so bright with light in here. And I'm not talking about just the light of a window. Like it is, there's a light that's so bright. It it's, it's illuminates in here. Y'all. That is the atmosphere of God, right? That's not something that I'm conjuring up, right? That's not something that, you know, a lampshade could do. That is, you know, bringing in the atmosphere of heaven and those type of things, supernatural things can be seen even with the visible naked eye, right? So, you know, what kind of atmosphere are we carrying? Even when you come into somebody's home, you know, you can feel the, the atmosphere. What is it full of peace? Is it full of joy or is it full of contention? Is it dark when you go in? Everything's dark. I mean, these are things that you can take notice to. And I'm telling you, we are creative atmospheres, whether we really know it or not. So let me give you some tips on creating atmospheres. 
prayer, right? Where we pray and we meet with God. When you pray, you are sending up a sweet aroma, an incense. When you declare the word of God out loud, right? You are creating an atmosphere. When you listen to anointed worship music, I mean, there are, there's a lot of worship music, but it doesn't mean that it's of God. It doesn't mean that it's anointed, special, powerful music. So let the Lord lead you to anointed worship music. I love Micah Stanley. Oh, y'all, Benny Hinn's worship song list, it is so anointed. There are so many anointed. Um, it may not be your style of music, but hey, y'all, it will usher in the presence of God. So these are a couple of artists. CC Winings, you want the anointing? Play, play this music in your house. And you can even play it, you know, when you're away. You can just put it low volume in rooms. In my office, I try to always keep um, praise music uh, playing in the background. And I ask that, you know, hey, don't come in and uh, turn it off. I know that it may seem like it's, you know, uh, wasting energy or whatever. But I want to always create an atmosphere um, where I'm praying, where I'm spending time. Because, hey, I'm building an altar to my God, right? So, again, this is nothing creepy, weak, creepy, EBGB, okay? Get your mind out of new age. Get your mind out of all of that stuff, the perversions. And I want you to read your Bible because when you read your Bible, <laughs> you'll see throughout the Bible that altars are mentioned, building altars, all the mighty men and women of God, building altars unto their God, right? And we see that Jacob, when he built an altar of God, he was sleeping in a place. He said, I didn't even know that God was there. He had opened up the uh, uh, windows of heaven and angels were going back and forth on the ladder of Jacob, right? So many mysteries and I wish I could get deeper but I don't want you know this is spiritual um, altars and that's a very deep topic I just wanted to give you something to think about to pray about maybe one day if I'm led I will do a whole teaching um, on spiritual altars not only building them but pulling down um, demonic spiritual altars all right guys i hope that this was helpful you all have a beautiful day in the lord walk in the light let the lord lead you guide you teach you um, mold you shape you in this day my prayer is that as you go into this day that you're going to love god more you're going to know him more you're going to understand him more and you're going to apply the word because as we apply the word it helps us to grow in faith all right all right guys i love you and don't forget to subscribe like and share if the videos are blessing you i appreciate your support in sharing the word of god all right guys